hope this is working because it's about the 19th time I've tried it. So, somebody wanted to know about ironing. Now, I would like to put a caveat here. I am notoriously a terrible ironer. Most of my clients actually have forbidden me from ironing their shirts because I do not do a good job. Now, I want some steam in this. It's just an old steam iron. I haven't got any ironing water. And anyway, it's a pounder bottle and it's bloody water with a smell in it. But I don't want my iron to scale up. So I used water out my kettle because it's already boiled. And I figure that the scale in this is already in my kettle. So it won't do too much harm in my iron. There we go. Right. Now, I've only got shirts, but the principle kind of stays. You've got, I don't know if you can see this, three heats. Mine's on maximum. If you iron polycotton or synthetic on maximum, you will end up with that, which is little bits of melted plastic on it. I haven't got any iron cleaner. I'm not going to scrape it off. I'm just going to pretend it's not there. Setting two is a slightly cooler setting, and that will do for polycottons and some synthetics. But do be very careful. To be honest, if you're organised, you can use a cloth, a, an old tea towel, damp it down and use that between um, your iron and th especially things like your work shirts where you need quite a hard iron to make them crisp and look really, really good. Um, so you can use a hotter iron if you use the cloth. You won't melt things and you'll get an, a nice crisp looking result. Number two is for, for things that, you know, those nylon-y shirt things that you may have got that have got a bit creased. Personally, I actually find, I, I have quite rough cuticles on my hands often, I find the feel of fine nylon fibres. Oh, makes me feel quite sick. So I've turned it to a low heat because this shirt I'm about to iron is silk. Now, there's an order when you iron a shirt. You start with a collar, you then do what they call the yoke, which you can't really see on this one because it doesn't have a separate yoke, but it's the bit where you, you, know, you yoke things over your shoulders. You do the collar, the collar, the yoke. Then you do the cuffs and the sleeves. And you do one side, the other side, and last you do the back. But, as I said, I am a notoriously bad ironer. So if I iron my fingers off, I complain. Right, so here we go. Spread it out on your board. Don't burn your fingers, but use the other hand to just pull the fabric taut. Don't rush, you're just gliding the iron over nice and steadily because you've got to let the heat and the steam do the work. Now I will say I have got a taller and bigger than usual ironing board because ironing gives me bad back and I'm so bad at it. And I'm going to do up the back to over the shoulder seam. Now, some people have said that their iron spits yellow water. Mine just hasn't got a big enough cable. Um, mine does too. It's getting old. And I think that inside the tanky bit where they heat, it's probably picked up some residue of something. And it spits water, yellow water that marks my clothes. I generally, in the winter, I only iron the collars of my shirts because nobody can see the rest as there's a jumper over them. And I don't wear shirts for work. And if I do wear shirts for work, I don't care how crunky they are. Um, I've got, I do like my pillowcases ironed because I like a crisp and smooth pillowcase. And some of those have got suspicious stains on them from the iron. But it does seem to wash out. And if I have any sense, I'll you know, iron a few non-white things first. If it matters to you, again, use a cloth. Uh, you know, an old bit of finished cotton, an old tea towel. Obviously it needs to be clean and I would keep one dedicated for ironing. Just put it, you know, fold it up and put it in your basket, your washing basket, or fold it up and tuck it under the cover of your ironing board. Um, if you do a lot of ironing, you might consider a steam generator iron. I used to have a very cheap one I bought off of Face Bay and it was absolutely wonderful. Um, they can, if you're not careful, if you're belting steam around and your wallpaper's not too well glued on, they might end up steaming your wallpaper off because you've turned your ironing room into a real steamy mess. But steam undoubtedly makes the 
be uneasy. Now I'm right-handed, so I plug me, mine in on the right-hand side, and I actually can't get my... Try and get it up there. I, my iron hasn't got a massively long cable, and it doesn't easily reach to the end of the board unless I do some gymnastics. So all I'm doing is just swiping over. Now, it's called a plucket. And what you do is you go flip to the inside of the shirt and you when you're doing trousers when you do I don't know how much of me you can see when you do up by the waistband the trousers and the pockets I turn the trousers inside out and I get under the pocket with the iron and I get into everything that I need to because you know the trousers have pockets and things on the inside get the pockets smooth and flat against the body of the trousers and then I turn them the right way round and iron the rest of them because it stops there being a crumpled lump where a pocket is sitting all ironed into a bundle and it will show when you put them on. Um, some, some things are, I mean I like silk because when it's dry it, it irons really really easily. Um, as most of you probably know, all my clothes are second hand and I buy them off eBay and because of that I try not to buy anything synthetic. I buy silk shirts and they're not necessarily expensive because silk is actually keeps you nice and warm. It's lovely to go under woolens in the winter and it's quite airy in the summer. It also means that when I get fed up with my shirt I pass it on to one of the charity shops to give somebody else some pleasure or if it's really knackered, um, most of them will compost because they're natural. Wool jumpers will compost, cotton will compost. Although sometimes you you know you can wrap, cut them up into squares, cut the seams off, and use them as cleaning cloths. It seems a shame to just get rid of them or have them go into landfill. And I think some of these charity collections that they give you, where they allegedly take stuff off to third world countries where they're pathetically grateful for our cast offs. You know what, I think it, it would be a lot better if we just encouraged local businesses in the third world to have, to have a business. Let's keep our ex-clothes here and we can all share them and buy them and the money can go. The money can go to aid companies and they can support um, business people in developing nations. And then they are, right, there you go. You can see it's not perfectly ironed, but it will do. Now, that's the silk one. I'm now going to turn it right up because I'm going to do cotton. You can buy things like starches and that to spray, which give your finish. Your, <coughs> it's an elephant size shirt. It's a really baggy, droopy one. It is actually a size 12, I think, but it's supposed to be loose. I'm not wearing an elephant shirt, although in fact I probably ought to because I quite like loose shirts. Anyway, um, you can buy spray starches, which I have got some under the sink. You spray those on, follow the directions, spray them on. Give them a 30 seconds or so for the stuff just to seep, soak in, and then iron your shirt. And it will come up quite nice and crisp, but, and there is a big but there, they sometimes leave bits and residue on the iron after you've done it. And if you are using things like that, I'd keep just an old damp, clean cloth there and just half pass the iron over it a few times and wipe it up the edges. Let's give it a go. So, when you do the buttons, most irons, they either have just the plate that's separate like that, but the idea of that, is that I'm not, I, have, I, I am going to sew the rest of this. You can go in between the buttons, like that, so you iron right up to the buttons. Because although when you button it up, that bit under there isn't visible, it's, I, I can't stand clothes, I can't bear it if I can feel clothes. So I want to get all the insides and everything. Things like labels, I like to iron them flat so that when I'm wearing it, that label doesn't dig into me. Because I assure you, if I can feel it, I have to take the garment off and put something else on. It absolutely drives me nuts. So everything I've got in here is cotton. I can't even show you a polycotton shirt how to do it. Um, 
but we'll give it a go. I'll pretend. Oh, tea towel. Either sprinkle it with water or dip it in water and wring it till it's really dry. And then what you do, get the piece, you smooth it out, you lay the cloth on top of it, you iron through the cloth. Any crap that's stuck to your iron or is coming out will go on the cloth, not that. You can make it look a little bit crumpled because obviously you're, you're pushing the fabric under into the fabric on top, so just pull it straight after you've done it and it will go instantly. I also recommend that if you're using a lot of steam, when you've finished ironing things like shirts, you hang them on wire hangers. Just hang them off, off your pictures or something or off a door frame. Um, even if you're going to fold them and put them away because the fabric needs to cool down and get completely dry and once it's cool and completely dry it won't crease nearly as easily. I forgot I had got the cuffs on this. Luckily I have some cufflinks. And that's the other reason why I don't often wear shirt, shirts for work because I have only got a few pairs of cufflinks and a lot of my shirts are double cuffs. I have long arms, I'm like I'm a run of town, and a lot of women's sh blouses and shirts don't fit me. The waist sit too high and the sleeves are too short, so I buy men's shirts and tuck them in, which, if any of you are taller than me, you will know the, the pain up there. You just use the point of your iron. When I'm doing the end of the sleeve, I don't know if you can see, I don't know what you can see here. When you use the end of the sleeve, I'm just using the point of the iron and pulling it up so that fabric is smooth as it goes under the iron and then if you look that's not too bad at all well not for me I do know people who can iron and make a shirt look like new and I am not one of them you just use your fingers you lay it flat smooth it out and just gently run over with the iron try not to rush and if like me you can't bear doing it put the radio on or put an audio book on or something, something to keep you amused. My mother-in-law watches the television while she irons and that is because she is a superb ironer and she does not burn her fingers, put her foot on things, tear things and make a general mess of it. So she can iron while she watches the television. I actually think this is completely unreasonable and she has some awful, awful trick of magic, but still. Right, hopefully that's given you the basics. I'm just waffling now. Let me see if this took on the camera.